Good day, everyone, and welcome to Noel Anderson's 15 Minutes of Fame. Now, I've got a little bit of a treat for you today. Usually, I'm interviewing people and I have have a guest on. But this podcast, I decided to do something a little bit different. Um, I decided to fly solo. That means um, there is no guest. I don't have a particular topic to talk about. And I'm just going to see where we go and um, see what comes out. Hopefully, um, by the end of the podcast, you'll learn a little bit about me. I'll also be entertaining and funny and... um, I don't know, educational as well. The reason I decided just to record a podcast uh, with myself is that I haven't really got an opportunity for you to really get to know me as Noel, the presenter of 15 Minutes of Fame. And I thought this was the uh, perfect opportunity to get to know a little bit about me and uh, I guess what makes me tick. So be very scared, okay? Now, you can probably hear my voice is a little bit croaky and it's kind of dropping in and out. Yes, yes, you are correct in in thinking it could have something to do with COVID. I've uh, recently discovered I was a close contact with somebody who had the dreaded COVID and um, I've been isolating uh, for several days now. And uh, while I haven't tested positive, uh, my voice is uh, definitely uh, cutting in and out, which means I could test positive at any minute, possibly even even during this podcast. Maybe uh, that's something um, I can do at the end, hey? I can uh, test myself on Noel Anderson's 15 Minutes of Fame channel and see if I'm still negative. Let's hope I am. Now, I haven't prepared anything for this. I didn't uh, get up this morning and sit down and write what I was going to talk about or think really even about what I was going to say. But I do have my trusty iPhone beside me here. I've got it opened up at a page which says, and I'll read it. Whoops, I've just got to open my phone. And it says 100 podcast topic ideas. So this is going to be a little bit of a test for me to see how good I am at improvisation, um, which I always used to be very good at uh, in drama classes. Because I'm just a little bit under the weather, I might not be as quick as I usually am, but uh, let's give it a go anyway. So I'm just going to open my phone again, which is shut down. Oops. And again, I've got to type in my password and I'm going to scroll to a subject and we'll see there's a hundred ideas ideas here and I'm going to stop at one. It's number 18 in the 100 ideas and it's travel. Let's talk about travel. Four years ago, before COVID came along and sat us all down in front of Netflix watching The Tiger King, I did travel. I traveled over to London and Paris. I remember at the time I was very apprehensive about traveling overseas by myself. I don't know why, because I had lived over in London and I'd lived in Edinburgh and I'd lived a little bit in New York as well, as well as um, Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne, where I am recording this podcast. So I've lived around quite a little bit, but I was very, very apprehensive. I guess because the first time in my life, I started to feel like I was really honestly flying solo in life. And what I mean by that is um, there was no one else that had my interest at heart as much as I did. Do you know what I mean by that? I mean, a lot of people have partners or they have someone that they are extremely close to um, or they have family um, that they're extremely close to. But I didn't feel there was anyone that I was extremely close to. And I was really flying solo overseas. And it, it started to cause me great anxiety just before I was leaving to get on the plane. I remember, I'm not a, a very big drinker, but I remember downing two vodkas just to get out the house. When I, when I got on the plane, uh, what I discovered Um, is something that I've known for a very long time. That writing, you know, sitting down and putting my ideas and my thoughts, my points of view, my insecurities in particular, down in words makes me feel better. And I started blogging. I started blogging in the plane. 
I blogged when I got off the plane. I blogged in cafes in London. I blogged in cafes in Paris. And the more I blogged, the more secure I felt and um, the less anxiety I had. Writing has always been a joy for me. It's been a, a release. It's a little bit like uh, recording this solo podcast in that um, you have to get yourself This is just my opinion. Let me just put that out there before I say this. In order to write, in order to um, podcast, you've got to move yourself into this very free space um, where you're not judgmental of anything you are writing about, or in case of a podcast, anything that you are saying. So I I, I would always try and get myself, be it in London, be it in Paris, uh, I would try and uh, move myself to this very free, open space where ideas could flow in and where I could push ideas out only with my take on them, my personal twist, my bent, for want of a better word. So, so writing really became um, my salvation and my, I guess my security blanket when I was traveling overseas. Well, that's one story down. That was one idea. I think I did all right with that. Let's just see what else um, I can come up with using my trusty iPhone for ideas. Here we go. Just scrolling down. Oh, podcast on recreational. Well, the only thing I can think of talking about recreational might get us banned. So I'm not going to talk about recreational. Podcast about pets. This is um, 31, a pet podcast. I don't have any pets. I don't have a great desire for pets. I know a lot of people love pets. I've got a friend who has two cats and um, he thinks they're his children. They think he's their dad, uh, which I find rather amusing. They're quite beautiful cats and he loves them. But um, I've never really um, had a strong affection, I guess, for, for animals. Although I love them, so that's a bit of a weird thing I've just said, isn't it? I do love animals, you know, and I I think I'm more a dog person than a cat person. But many years ago, we did have a cat and a dog when I was growing up. And uh, my dog did love me because I can be quite lovable, despite not really needing animals around me. And my dog's name was um, was Goldie, and she was a, a Labrador, and uh, she used to jump into bed with me. She's probably the only thing that regularly jumped into bed m- with me as a teenager. I don't know really where, I'm not going there. But um, yeah, she used to jump into bed with me, and I remember I used to wake up, and she used to have her nose resting on my face, and she'd have her head on the pillow with me. Can you believe it? And my mum used to come in. She used to say to her, Goldie, get off that bed. That's how she said it. She said it exactly like that. She said, Goldie, get off that bed. And Goldie used to jump off the bed and run off because everyone was scared of my mum. Because when she was angry, she was um, she was a little a little scary. Unfortunately, Goldie did get very sick and uh, and passed away. This is where the The tears start coming in the podcast, by the way. So grab your tissues. And I remember we took her up to the vet and the vet said to us, there's nothing he could do for poor little Goldie. My mother was devastated, absolutely devastated. She cried the whole night when she died. So I guess there's a moral to this story. Be careful who you love and who you get close to because love doesn't last. Mm, That's a bit bit of a downer that story wasn't it hey i gave it a go and it is i am improing uh, this right on the spot because as i said earlier i haven't planned anything so let's try let's try another one as i hit the code to open my phone and it's asking me to talk about hmm talk about my life okay do a podcast about my life what can i tell you I guess the the biggest thing i could tell you is that i started drama when i was um about 14 years old, went to a school uh, which was called the Independent Theatre School and it was over in Mossman in Sydney, which is a very posh part of part of Sydney. And I came from a relatively poor part of Sydney Um, and it was a big thing. I mean, every every week I would go to drama classes and I was the only kid in my school um, that was going to drama classes because um, nobody else I'm, I'm sure could afford drama classes in the area I grew up in. But somehow or other, my mother managed 
to see um, that it would be good for me, and she paid for them. We used to um, we used to do things like pretend we were ice creams and pretend we were trees. Trees were, was always easy to do. Ice cream, pretending you're an ice cream is a little bit harder because you've got to melt. Uh, and I remember the first couple of drama lessons, I, I always thought, what the fuck is this about? You know, maybe not quite in that language, because I was a pretty good kid, didn't swear um, and didn't smoke. But I did, I did wonder why we were pretending to be trees and, um, and ice creams and I don't know. And we were never asked to be dildos or anything like that. It was always very wholesome things. A teapot, you know, Noel, you're a teapot today. That girl over there can be, I don't know, a cricket bat. So that that was um, something about my life. Mostly, I enjoyed drama classes. It was a bit of an escape, and it gave me a chance to just go with whatever popped into my brain. A little bit like I'm doing right now for this podcast, because as you know, I'm I'm flying flying solo. solo, 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 solo. So I'm just flicking through um, some more. Oh, this one, number 52, podcast about a a bad boss, bad ass boss. You know, I've had lots of mediocre bosses, you know, it's like the really bad people and all the really good people that stick in my mind. But if the people are a little bit sort of mediocre, they sort of don't stay with me. I just forget about them uh, straight away. A boss I did have, who was not a bad boss, um, but was a really good boss, was actually a female boss. She had ginormous breasts, you know. That's, that's what I always think of. I always think of her, and I think of her very large breasts. Because whenever she'd come in to talk to you, she was always stroking her breasts, you know. And it was always a, a very strange thing to do. And she was always wearing beautiful clothes, very expensive clothes. And she'd always stroke the clothes and stroke her breast. But she she was, um, uh, you know, apart from her very large, large breasts, she was a fantastic boss in that she looked for those things in people that worked for for her or under her that made them individual. And she would find things for them to do that utilize their talent. When she passed away, uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, her funeral was in in the um, in Wynyard in uh, Sydney, and it was in an old church in Wynyard. When I turned up, there were hundreds of people there, hundreds of people. Now she was very well off. She knew everybody in the industry, the entertainment industry. I would say had all encountered her somewhere along the line. And um, as I was going, walking into the funeral, people were saying, "Oh, you're going to hear some very surprising things about her today." I didn't know what those surprise, surprising things were going to be. But as it turned out, with all her money and all her wealth, every Saturday morning. She got up and she went to King's Cross. She would dish out soup in the soup in the soup kitchen in King's Cross and help feed the homeless and the people who needed um, help in life. It's it, it always struck it struck me as being so opposite to what she presented. You know, this well dressed, well groomed, well loved and respected wealthy woman who of her weekends helped others so when i think of great bosses i think of uh, i think of her and i think of her ability to look for the good in the people that worked under her and uh, and also promote them um, because of their qualities that she saw as unique um, and she herself of course was um was a very generous person all righty wow that was um that was a big journey that one i think i'm doing all right so far flying solo let's go with one more question i'm just flicking through it now um i don't know what to take for this next one a wild animals podcast musical instrument podcast a weather podcast i mean i'm flying solo and i'm going to talk about the weather on this podcast oh i don't know oh look none of them are really grabbing me a health podcast Let's talk about health. 
because as you, as, you, as you can tell, I'm I'm a little bit husky and it may be COVID or it may not be COVID. We're not sure. But it's important, um, I find, as, as time goes on, for us to look after our health. And, and it really does play a big part in making us who we are in our day-to-day life. I've always um, exercised. I didn't exercise as a kid. I was actually very lazy as a kid. Well, not lazy. I just didn't want to exercise. I wanted to read books. I wanted to write. I wanted to watch movies. I wanted to watch television. I didn't particularly want to run, although I didn't mind swimming a little bit here and there. So I, I, there were other things I'd rather do than exercise when I was a kid. But at around about 16, probably around the time puberty started to set in, I started to become quite active in exercising. And it's something I continue today, even though, you know, I've put a little few pounds on here and there. I continue to exercise because I think it's important for our mental health. Also, uh, it helps with your creativity as well if if you're um, healthy and happy because being creative is not easy. You need to have grit and you need to have stamina and you need to know uh, when uh, to find that um, stamina and get moving and create something like this podcast today where I'm flying, flying solo. Solo, 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 solo. I don't think I would, would be sitting down here now talking Pardon me. I don't think I would be sitting down here now talking to you if um, if I didn't exercise regularly because exercise helps you find the energy to get yourself off the lounge, um, to get off your bum, you know, do something, even though you don't know how many people are going to listen or if people are going to be interested. It, it motivates you to keep going um, and being healthy uh, certainly does that. Whew. I don't know whether that was a good one or not. I, th- I think I failed a little bit at that. Let's do a wrap up. A fantasy podcast. This is number 93. A fantasy podcast. Oh, you know, I think it was Warhol. Andy Warhol said um, everyone deserves a good fantasy. And I've certainly had fantasies in my life. I've had people I've fancied. People I used to see out dancing, you know. I used to love going out dancing. You, you'd spot someone you thought was cute. You'd fantasize about them. It was always a, a, a joy when your fantasy became reality and uh, you eventually got to sleep with them. That was that was always fun. Sometimes sleeping with people you fancied fantasized about the um, reality wasn't as good as the fantasy and you should have kept the fantasy uh, going rather than the actual you know doing the do Um, but you know I think fantasies are important they have helped me loosen up I suppose you know in order to record a podcast in order to just chat about anything you have to not edit yourself and you have to be open and available that's sort of what we do when we let ourselves fantasize about something if you said to me now you can have you can um, fantasize about anything you want what would that be oh gosh I fantasize sometimes that I find love, I suppose, but then I don't have a face for that person. I just, I just have a feeling, you know, like, like my fantasy is about the feeling of falling in love. It's not really about a person as such. But you know, in in creating a fantasy about love, you, you're destined to fail, aren't you? I mean, how many people have created fantasies around love and and the realities? Uh, been perfect. I mean, not many people. So I don't think I'm doing very well at this fantasy thing. Maybe I'm just not a person that fantasizes, although I just said I was. Hmm. Number 88, a wine podcast. Well, I tell you, and this is coming, we're coming to the close of this podcast. I think I'm really hitting rock bottom for subjects to talk about when I talk about wine. I'm not a big drinker. I've never been a big drinker. Uh, And I remember when I was living in Queensland, I used to have two glasses of champagne and I was drunk. No, seriously, I was. I was absolutely paralytically drunk on two glasses of champagne. And I would jump out of the taxi, run upstairs, throw my clothes off 
and fall into bed absolutely drunk. And I only had two drinks. As you get older, you start to get better at drinking and you don't get as drunk as quickly. And you can drink a lot more with, without becoming paralytically drunk. And sometimes you want to become paralytically drunk. I was drunk recently, just after a party, and I went home with someone. Which isn't a surprising thing, and I don't mean it to sound like it was a surprise, but I was un- I was not expecting to go home with somebody. And it was pleasant, you know, as, as those things are. But when I woke up the next morning, I had the worst headache. I mean, it was a shocker. Absolutely shocking. I think it might have been the three or four Long Island iced teas I'd had and the, the champagne that I'd drunk. So I did wake up very seedy. It was a good night. I can hear you thinking collectively out there, did he have a good time? I did have a good time, but the next morning was very, very rugged. I don't think I want to ever get that drunk ever again. During lockdown, of course, I did drink a little bit of wine like everybody else did. And I did go through every different type of Kylie Minogue's wines. So I became like a Kylie Minogue wine uh, fanatic and drove all over Melbourne trying to get the various, you know, wines. And I have tried them all now. That was a little bit of fun in lockdown, actually, driving all over Melbourne trying to get the latest Kylie wine, which means it's time for me to test because you can hear my voices cutting in and out but it's time for me to do my COVID test for the day and check that I'm still negative so here we go stay with me all right just going to all right turn that go there get up there one bit to the other side (coughs) there we go just um shaking it in the little jar you know the little plastic thing you get with a COVID test we're just doing that all right Taking this out there. Okay. Just putting the three drops in now. You know the three drops you have to do for the COVID test. Just waiting for the results. Hasn't been too bad, has it? My flying solo. I don't know if I said anything funny or interesting, but hey, fuck it. All right, here we go. I'm still negative. Still negative. Thank God for that. All right, so... Still got my husky throat, still not feeling great, but it's still not COVID. I suppose that's a good thing, hey? I hope you've enjoyed my podcast. Hope you've learned a little bit about me today. If you liked it, tell your friends. And if you didn't, don't say anything. My name is Noel Anderson. You've been listening to Noel Anderson's 15 Minutes of Fame. And this podcast, I've been flying solo.